once again an awesome turnout. Uh, 16th annual pancake breakfast, and you know we've just had an awesome turnout from the community every year. You know, we had we got cooking this morning bright and early, and uh, you know we had lots of help from from the community, the RCMP, the BC Ambulance Service, uh, Terror Search and Rescue. Uh, the Volunteer Association, Thornhill Fire Department as well. So uh, we've had a lot of help from everyone and it's going really smoothly so far. And 100% of the proceeds go to the BC Professional Firefighters Burn Fund. Um, and it's a great cause that has so many programs for everyone in the province. And 100% of the food is donated by local businesses. And uh, there's too many to even to name, but the, we couldn't do without them. Yeah, we just want to thank the community and, and the community, uh, the businesses, and everyone who comes out to support support the burn fund and support our, our pancake breakfast. We're really pleased with how many people have been coming up. It just keeps getting bigger each year, like most of our events. Children are always thrilled by the horses and ponies. They're a really big draw, so we're really happy to partner with Northwest Therapeutic Equestrian Association. We have a free Canada birthday cake, um, a huge silent auction with over $15,000 in donations from local businesses. Uh, we have artist exhibitions in each of the buildings as part of the Summer Arts Festival. Um, yeah, and tons of children's activities, all sorts of things. For the last two years, we've been bringing down a sandwich board to the pancake breakfast, sending people up after our event. We're hoping next year to have a shuttle that brings people up, but we haven't gotten that far this year. So we have blacksmithing demonstrations happening every Sunday from about 11 to 5 at the museum. Um, we're open seven days a week all summer, so come on up for a tour, to have a picnic, or for one of our kids' events. Thanks everyone, happy Canada Day! Well, we're here for the, uh, it must be the fifth annual Dave Saunders Drag Racing Memorial at uh, the Kitimat Hill Climb. This has been going on since the 70s. It's 
taken a few breaks over the years, but it's back on again for the last five years. I've got a 1967 Camaro I've owned since the 80s. Uh, just my street car and uh, my kids are running junior dragsters. It's been good. It's nice that the weather has actually changed for us to continue running on the hill. And uh, it was a little slipperier earlier on, but it's actually stopped raining and as you can see, it's got sun. So we're pretty excited and the car is running nice, which is nice. Started here on the hill climb years ago. Uh, there was a break after that. Uh, as for racing the hill climb, this is my first year. Uh, but I've been racing off and on since I was uh, about 17 years old, so that's a few years. I have a 1969 Pontiac GTO Ram Air 3 car with a, a 428 big block. As long as we have enough guys interested in doing it, and uh, yeah, I think we're going to keep going. I mean, we're, there's a lot of racers here and they like to race. We've driven as far as Vancouver and Calgary to go racing, so we like to race in our own hometown. Home, uh, hometown. The uh, competition's excellent. Everybody's here to kind of help out. It seems like a pretty good camaraderie between the guys, and uh, so far the atmosphere is good. For today, it's actually pretty good. We have about uh, 40 cars in total, I think, and uh, it's for as you can see, we got a good uh, selection of cars out today. A lot of fast ones too. The conditions on the hill are, are well. There's no traction here because it's just pavement, and we run slicks, so. Uh, it doesn't really stick well. We're just here for fun and you know I gotta watch it so I don't uh, go sideways and crash. We're still slipping but uh, I think the track as you'll see get uh, faster and faster as the day gets down. We'll have more rubber on the track too which is nice. I've had that car since I was 19 I believe and so that's um, over 20 years and it, it used to be on the street but now it's strictly a track car and yeah I've pretty much built it to where it's at through the years. Uh, this is a 1980 Camaro. Uh, it's uh, just something that we put together. It's our top speed so far has been, uh, or sorry, our top time so far has been a 7.3 flat. So in this, uh, with this group, that's not too bad. That qualifies it as an A-class car. celebrating 100 years of policing in the community of Terrace. Uh, between the RCMP and the former BC Provincial Police, um, policing has been occurring officially here in Terrace for 100 years this year, and so uh, we thought it would be a great idea to um, put on display all of the different uh, units and sections and uh, um, equipment that we have uh, available to us here to uh, police the community of Terrace. What we wanted to show the public was uh, what we do, what we have to offer, explain it, because sometimes the public doesn't really understand, you know, the different roles that we play within our outfit, and, uh, and educate everybody about, about who and what we do. You know, to celebrate 100 years that there's been a lot of police officers that have come before us, and to uh, recognize them, we have a, a really good display with the, uh, the Veterans Association here, um, with some... Uh, uh, artifacts and information dating back to when policing first started here. The police office was built in 1911 with the idea of having a policeman here. So in 1913, Tom Parsons, who was the first policeman for Terrace as the BC Provincial Police Constable, was stationed here and he was the policeman for the town. He would handle all your, uh, your criminal files and investigations and as in today's world, you're here to serve the public and do your bit for the community. And uh, 
the building that was uh, built at the corner of Lake Elson and Calum was built uh, for that. It's, there's only about four or five in the province of British Columbia that still stand on their original footings and that building is one of the ones that are here. You know, I, I look back to how it was a uh, hundred years ago when they would have been, uh, well, walking from here up uh, up to the NAS through the woods, uh, you know, to provide policing services. So, uh, uh, as well, um, you know, no air conditioning, uh, much, much, much hotter on days like that today that uh, we have those those uh, advantages. So. Can you imagine uh, doing the same job a hundred years ago? No, <laughs> no, it's, uh, although, you know, going up by dogs and uh, horses and all that, it's, it's a, it was a totally different way of policing back then. I've, I've uh, done everything that uh, you can possibly imagine, whether it be uh, on the water with boats uh, or uh, out uh, doing uh, just general policing in towns and communities from one man all by yourself and not another policeman around for another 500 miles sort of thing and other ones where uh, uh, you work with other groups on, on ships and larger, larger places. When I was here in my days of the early 70s, there was only three of us that uh, worked at, on one shift at a time and uh, we also did the whole NAS area at that time too. There was no detachment IH and things like that so we traveled all over the place. Is there any memories that stick out the most to you? There's a various uh, groups of memories. There's good, there's bad. Uh, every, every day is a great day for me. I have 17 years, so it's it's been a big change from when I first joined to, to now. And But the one thing that remains consistent is that communicating with the public is our number one priority and our number one job is being able to talk with the public, communicate with the public, because we are only as good as the public. And it's, it, it's the number one thing that we do. It's very important to us, you know, um, part of our role is, is not just, uh, you know, to investigate and, and apprehend offenders, but it's also, it's uh, proactive and uh, to, to uh, portray a, a positive image, uh, role models in the community so that uh, uh, youth in particular will, will have that instilled on, with them with, along with their education and parents and, and policing definitely has a role. And so to see them out here um, enjoying all of our equipment and playing with the sirens and, and that is, it's, it's, uh, it's really good to see. So I'm, I'm quite pleased. <laughs>a 10 kilometer trail run it's a one kilometer of paved road to get up to the trail and they do an eight kilometer race around the mountain bike loop and then another kilometer back down the pavement and they'll be finishing here the we expect the first runners about 50 minutes uh, total time and the majority of them will start crossing the finish line around the hour mark 36 years ago they started the the king of the mountain trail race it used to go up Calum hill behind us and it used to go up and down a hiking trail which was a lot steeper and a few years ago they put the mountain bike trail in uh, up on the mountain and the runners preferred running that so last year we made the uh, the change it made the race a little bit longer but uh, more runner friendly you no know, I've ran the trail a few times primarily I mountain bike so I've, I've probably been around the trail about a hundred times uh, but uh, yeah I've, I've run the trail twice already this year so this is the third time I've run it I ran it with my friend and my dad once 
It is definitely a challenging run. It's 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 a bit technical. Uh, there's lots of rocks, lots of roots, slippery sections, a couple really steep descents on the backside. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a challenge. It's uh, you know I I go out and run it for fun, and uh, it's a workout for sure. Yeah, because there's a lot of you know ups and then downs, and um, definitely you're not able to run the whole thing right off the start. It's something that you kind of have to work at to get that fitness level um, and it's tricky right because the terrain changes there's rocks and there's roots you really have to you eventually get good at it because you just know to what to watch for and where you should put your feet and stuff like that. You know, it should be a runner who gets out and runs, you know, road runs. And, you know, even if you've run five kilometers on, on road and stuff, it's it's trail. I prefer trail running. It's a lot, lot, you know, your body's changing positions and you're focusing more on the trail as opposed to road running, sometimes a little bit monotonous. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's you got to be prepared, though. Well, anybody could train enough to get ready for a race like this. Trail running is really easy on the body. I don't run a lot on the road anymore just because I do have, you know, it does eventually hurt your knees, but trail running, anybody, anybody can build up to it. The best way to train for a race like this or prepare for a race like this is to run um, hills. So be running uphill because, um, and then also just actually run on the trails to get used to what it feels like to, you know, run with varied terrain and routes and rocks and whatnot, so it's a little it's different than running on the road. Um, well, my legs started to get tired, but there was a skateboard as the prize, so I just kind of, just kind of, like, kept running. I uh, did some of the people that, that really want to get a good result and win this they will you know be training for the whole summer for a couple months but we've had other people that say they've gone out and ran the trail once and some actually today I was surprised we had over about 15 runners that had never been on this route before so it's good to see that and we had quite, I think quite a few runners from out of town this year too. I think I think a lot of people have started running that trail because you know we've told them how great it is and and they've stuck with it none of them have come back and said oh that was horrible we don't want to do that again they they've continued doing it so which is proof that it's fun it was a fun race um it was really nice of troy and nadine to put it on again this year it's a great trail and it's a great event and yeah so it's good to be finished it hurt for the first half an hour uh, for the foreseeable future now we'll we'll stick with this route 10 kilometers is a good distance a lot of races shoot for a 10 kilometer distance and uh, yeah that's I think we'll stick with this for the next 10 years at least everybody on the Snowbirds uh, squadron is hand-picked. Uh, the pilots are, the safety pilots are, uh, my position is, a lot of the NCM positions are. So we, it's a, it's a fairly small squadron, but we have a very um, challenging and uh, intense job. So we want to find the best people we can so that we can always accomplish our mission and still get along with, with everyone in the squadron. <laughs> history where it was a, a coveted position and you actually had to apply and get accepted but they've now opened it up just like any other posting anywhere else in Canada so um, I was actually brought to um, a little meeting when I was in Borden Ontario for my training and uh, they had asked me uh, are you interested in any kind of uh, isolated posting and so they really wouldn't tell me what was up at first but uh, the more more uh, speaking to the captain and whatnot uh, it was just I decided they asked and, and I took the position. It was always a dream of mine and it was something that I said I was going to at least try 
before I retired from the military. So, you know, after flying Auroras for 12 years, which I, I had a great time doing, and I, I missed that airplane, um, I, I, you know, I'm getting up, I've been in the military for 19 years, and I said, I'm not leaving the military until I at least put my name in to become a snowbird. We do represent the Canadian Forces as a whole, so our motto is skill, professionalism, and teamwork, which, you know, represents the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force at all trades. Uh, and we are a bit of ambassadors, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we do, re we represent everyone in the military, not just the Air Force. People think that we just represent the Air Force, but we represent Army, Navy and Air Force. And uh, yeah, and, and it's, I'm very proud to be part of the Snowbirds in doing so. Yeah, it's, it's quite incredible. I'm very proud. I'm very happy to, to be serving with the Snowbirds. And um, the, the big part of it is getting a chance to meet the people of Canada, um, talking to people all across Canada, children, um, just seeing the, the smiles that we make and the excitement that, uh, that comes from what we do. Uh, and I'm just very happy that we have that opportunity.